Here is a 2024 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring in meteorite gray over black interior. New this year is a Sport L Hybrid, which slots right underneath this. Is this going to be the best variant for a hybrid in the sense of MPG's everyday drive compared to the rivals? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm going to go over some pros and cons. And the problem that I have with the CRV Hybrid, all trims get LED headlights and daytime runnings. The grill gets the gloss black elements that goes into the headlamp assembly so it looks more wide and sleek. They've increased the length when they did the refresh and clearance for the all-wheel drive is at 8.2 inches which is one of the best in class for a hybrid SUV. And unfortunately, there is no option for a 360 degree reverse camera which would make this the sweet spot for SUVs because it's just a touch over 40 grand. And when you're thinking hybrid, 40 MPGs for the city, 34 MPGs for the highway out of the 2.0 liter four cylinder with 204 combined horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque paired to an eCVT transmission, which is an electronically controlled variable transmission with B range shift and deceleration selectors. The base turbo will be a 17 inch wheel for touring. We got a 19 inch wheel gloss black as well as the side view mirrors and the roof rails. And because of that trim, we're getting the chrome elements that's going to surround the window trim, the lower rocker, flares out a bit with the matte black, as well as the fenders. Tick in the box for hybrid opposed to turbo. Turbo is gonna to tow 1,500 pounds. Here, 1,000 pounds, so it's gonna decrease, as well as payload to under 700 pounds. MPGs, it's better than Toyota in everybody in its class, and it should because it was refreshed last year. Signature vertical LED taillights, gloss black that's going to surround it, as well as the lower roof spoiler. The lower is going to get the dual exhaust finishers, reverse parking sensors, and a reverse camera. All the hybrid trims beefing up the front and rear subframe with the active sound cancelization. And let's face it, you're wanting it to be a pleasant and quiet drive opposed to the turbo because this is the hybrid. Power lift gate, which starts on the EXL, going into 39.3 cubic feet of cargo. It's a lower opening and it's a wider opening. You get a couple of storage nooks on both sides with bag holders, LED interior lights, and a 12 volt charger. The only problem that I have is because this is longer than the HRV. You have to go to the back seats, or if you're tall, you can fold it this way, but you can see there's a lot of movements. So to make it easier, this is the way you have to fold these seats down flat in order to get the extra cargo capacity, which it's not gonna receive a spare tire because of the hybrid powertrain, and you still have this lip, which is about four inches, and that will increase cargo to 76.5 cubic feet. The EX starts with a 10-way power seat adjustment and heated front seats. Leather starts on the EXLI hybrid. Four-way power adjustment for the passenger starts on the EXL hybrid. Memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. You'll have a lot of leg space for the front occupants because of the way the design of the center is. The honeycomb design is going to be different then the Civic, but it still integrates into the whole dashboard with the aluminum look underneath it with Bose 12 speakers, which is only option on the Sport Touring Hybrid. The new Sport L Hybrid will start with the orange stitch that is in the seats and on the door panels. The nine inch infotainment starts on the EXL with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, put it into reverse and you get a reverse camera. The trajectory will expand out when you turn the wheel hard enough and you can change different camera layouts. Standard is a seven inch. Dual climate control settings in the Sport Hybrid will have 240 watts and six speakers, which is the same as the EX. The EXL will add eight speakers and giving you a total of 320 watts with the wireless charging pad with a 
12 volt, two USB, leather around the shifter and the key fob, as soon as I can get it, for the CRV hybrid. Driving mode select, which when you go into the gauge cluster, you got four driving modes, sport, normal, econ, and snow. You can also go through an array of information for the driver, including the turn-by-turn -turn navigation, leather wrap steering wheel, three-spoke multi-function with the paddle shift for the regenerative braking, and it's a heated steering wheel with the contrast stitching in orange. It's going to be soft to touch, contrast stitching yet again, a deep and long storage pocket, door and the dash configure it together and you get the gloss black that runs into it and it becomes soft to touch only where it needs to be one touch up and down for the windows and a medium sized storage pocket with a auto dimming rear view mirror led interior lights a moonroof and ambient lighting that's going to be found throughout the interior headroom it's going to be a little tight but these seats recline just got to find the lever I wouldn't recline it this far back, but if you did, you get a lot more space. And the reason why is because that armrest will also sit up with the cup holders, USB ports, air vents, storage only behind the passenger seat. The door is going to receive the same materials in the front, so you get the gloss black. When you go lower trims, that's gonna be stripped out and you won't receive the orange stitch. It's soft to touch. A smaller storage pocket that you can fit a couple of beverages in. The floor is more or less flat, so sharing feet space is not going to be a problem. Butt and shoulder space and leg space will be shared a little bit because of the way the seat contours inwards. But headroom, with the seats reclined, you have plenty of space. And when we have it upright, ugh, it's a little heavy. It becomes a little bit tight. The headliner is carved out for you behind the LED interior lighting. And one con right off the bat is the seat belt for the center because if you're sitting behind the driver, it's always going to be by your headrest or bothering the passenger. 204 horsepower, 247 pound-feet of torque. And I have it in sport mode, but as long as you go easy, you're not gonna hear the engine. Oh, there it is. It will eventually cut in. Engine is a little bit noisy. The sound deadening is pretty good because you have active noise cancelization. So that helps for the long journey. And it's also smoother than the turbo variant. So when you go hybrid, you're not just getting better MPGs, you're getting a better overall feel and ride. The steering loosens up as you start going to a higher speed, but it does have some weight to it. Visibility is good because we have 8.2 inches. This is the all-wheel drive. The front window is large and all the windows all around it. You have a more airy, open concept than Toyota. And you're getting better MPGs than Toyota. That's going to take me to some pros and cons, starting off with the pros on the Hybrid Sport Touring. Not only are you getting the best MPGs, but interior, you're getting the most space. You are decreasing in payload and towing, which is a con, but when you go up to the EXL, you start getting that sweet spot like I was expressing on the exterior, opposed to the Sport L Hybrid, which will just give you a few extra options meaning you're going to get the larger touch screen you're going to receive power seat adjustment for the passenger wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto starts on that trim and going up another pro when you're thinking hybrids typically you're way over 40 grand in which this is hovering in the lower $40,000 note which you're not only saving fuel but you're also saving a bit in your wallet the cons the Sport L hybrid should be the EXL and they should just cancel that trim out because then it would be the sweet spot because when you go in the sport trim for Honda you start getting the elements on the exterior to make it look more athletic even though it's a sleeper underneath the hood and another con is on the passenger side you only have four-way power seat adjustment which is a good thing but you can't change the position of the seat to make it sit more comfortable. You sit higher up. And when you pair that with the clearance, you're sitting pretty much on the headliner. Turn radius is about two lanes. Let's hear that engine. And to use the paddle shifts for 
the regenerative braking. It's not too bad actually. I would probably put it midway. That way it's still braking a little bit and it's helping you with your MPGs. I wouldn't necessarily turn it all the way off unless I'm trying to get somewhere quick. And now for the B-roll with the paddle shifts all the way, you get a pretty decent amount of charging with that. But it's not gonna be as optimal for that everyday drive. Going against Hyundai, this is just more clean and simplified and you have a lot more storage. It does lack a little bit in the back for storage and you do have to go up to higher trims in order to get the majority of the feature. And I know it's a hybrid, but just for the fun of it. That's going to take me to the big problem that I have with the CRV is when you do not want to option the hybrid, you can't even get these features in the turbo trim and it pushes you into the hybrid trim, which it's not as exciting as the turbocharged engine, even though they haven't done any power increase, it still would be nice that they offer these features. Plus, we're not receiving ventilated front seats or heated rear seats or a heads up display. I can understand it's under 42 grand, but when you're thinking fully loaded and you're not offering options, then you need to put every single feature in the vehicle. It's a great everyday vehicle. It has plenty of cargo capacity and it does everything that somebody would need for a day in and day out use. And anybody that it competes against, it's going to have a lot more open space in the front and the back seats are going to have a lot more leg space because they increased the length last year also. When you keep it into sport mode, the RPM will not change too much so you'll be hearing the engine a lot more so so i would suggest just leaving it in normal you don't really need to drive it in econ but i would probably use the paddles for about three that way you get some of the regenerative brake but you can still drive the vehicle but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank ocean honda for giving us this 2024 honda crv hybrid sport touring for our car review